Our friends in the West, the Rocking Royals of Montecito, staggered to the end of 2023 on the downhill slide. Harry continuing his ludicrous war on the free press, which of course he is doomed to lose. And former cable show actress Megan showcasing her thespian prowess as an extra bobbing around in the background on a coffee commercial. Not, I suspect, what they had in mind when three years ago they up stumps and quit Britain for a new lucrative life in sunny California. Hollywood, where the gruesome twosome saw their golden future, has pretty much closed the door amid well-founded fears that unless they're hurling hurtful grenades at King Charles and his family, they've got nothing to bring to the party. Weary of wokery, Tinseltown is emerging from a self-harming era of putting virtue signalling above profits and it's looking to make money, not politically correct friends. The studios have finally worked out that if you go woke, you go broke. But have Harry and Meghan, have they hell? Lost in the detritus of last year's fads, the Dullsville duo are still spouting woeful West Coast claptrap about empowerment, human rights and inner confidence that don't mean a thing to people in the real world with jobs who are just trying to get by. Megan's profoundly boring podcast series, Archetypes, where the American Duchess set out, in her words, to dissect, explore and subvert the labels that try to hold women back, was axed by Spotify after just 12 insomnia cure episodes. Despite superstar guests like Mariah Carey and Serena Williams, executives at the streaming giant swiftly decided that Meghan's moaning wail of tedium wasn't worth the $20 million they'd invested, and they cancelled the contract with one angry boss dismissing the Sussexes as a couple of effing grifters. Meanwhile, over on Netflix, their $100 million deal is just about intact, but with one dreary-sounding film in the offing, Hollywood insiders are predicting a rocky road ahead. Meet Me at the Lake is all about a second-chance romance for a couple in Meghan's former hometown, Toronto. Excitement is not in the air. I simply can wait. What a shame it was that the dynamic duo's brilliant pitch for an Emily in Paris-style series only with a bloke, was resoundedly rejected. But it's more than laughably feeble ideas that will seal the Duke and Duchess's fate. Their downhill slide looks certain to get considerably steeper, and here's why. They're stuck on last year's woke train while the rest of the world is moving on and leaving them behind. It's all very well to be earnest and serious, but it's called the entertainment industry because the mission is to entertain. Fighting the free press in British courts is only entertaining for those of us who know Harry is on a hopeless hiding to nothing. And as for Meghan, lost in new age space, God knows what lies ahead for her. But you heard it here first, folks. Here's what doesn't lie ahead for the ambitious Mrs. Sussex, a future in Washington politics, because she's got nothing meaningful to say. And on that bombshell, I wish Harry and Meghan a happy and prosperous new year. There you go. Do you wish them a, new, a happy and prosperous new year, JJ? Your heroes. <laughs> My heroes. 2024, uh -huh. new year, the same old rants from Uncle Kev. Right. Oh, of the he's so, Yeah, he's so angry at them. Well, the for, for no reason. For no oh, reason. Yeah, no, no, there is a reason. This is the anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is the I mean, anniversary. You say of what respect. you like about the gruesome twosome, but they're a good story and people love to talk about. <laughs> That's why I do it. Yeah. What about you, uh, Esther? Well, what do you feel? <laughs> A little, little inside into the cynical <laughs> side of the industry there. Yeah, 2024 has gotten off to a good start because we don't have Spare 2.0. So this week is the anniversary of when Spare was released mm. and everyone was talking is about it? Harry's is frozen it? todger. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you remember that? Yeah, Frostbit and todger. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but now <laughs> At we least don't... we don't have to put up with it that for this year. For well, God's who knows sake. if it's still there? I don't know. I'm yeah. not too sure. Maybe uh, Megan can confirm I mean, that. But let, let's be serious for a second. Seriously. Uh, you know, I do think that they've got to recalibrate their approach to the entertainment industry, their plans for the future, mm. uh, because they've been very woke. Archetypes was just hopeless. It was hopeless. It was, well, it, was it, it, it just did not understand that you can't bore people and expect to make money. <laughs> but it was record breaking. Yeah, because people were curious. They yeah. didn't yeah. say so, record breaking. So record breaking that Spotify said, we're so excited by this, we're going to axe it. 
because they couldn't monetize it. Because it was it. hopeless. They couldn't monetize it. What they should have said, Spotify. Well, that's no good then, well, that's, is it? That's not Harry's fault, is it, or Megan's? That's Spotify's yes, fault. Yes, it is. It's Spotify's fault. Spotify should if have said. If you can't monet- monetize something in the entertainment industry, that's Spotify's it, it's fault. called a flop. Spotify should have said. How do, how do they monetize it's not Spotify's fault? It's Spotify's fault. How do they? No, no, you should for a minute. Spotify. <laughs> how do they monetize Joe Rogan? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Why am I putting in people? adverts continuously? Why didn't they put in adverts on archetypes? Because, uh, because, people, because people will be bored. Give it up, Jay, no, Jay. No, no. Be and bored. And listen, It's not listen, Spotify's listen, fault. Listen, it's saying, Harry and Meghan's fault, saying, isn't it? They're boring. No, saying that, oh, they could put an idea to do um, Emily in Paris, but with a guy. How stupid. Excuse me. That it is stupid. That is Hollywood full stop. No, no, we, we've got Ghostbusters. But let's bring it back. But let's make it Ghostbusters with women. Oh, great but idea. it is stupid. We've, we've, but it, it yeah, cool. but, but that's an inter- that's an interesting example you've cited there because that was Hollywood uh, climbing aboard the woke wagon and it stayed on that wagon until they'd made so many films about the links to slavery that the public just said we're not going to watch this crap what and about- uh, and that's their trouble. They're stuck on the woke but train. Also- they don't realise it's left the station. Emily, about- Emily, Emily in Paris has a predominantly female audience. Who's going to watch what? I don't know. We don't have Johnson to talk about in Paris. That, <laughs> Johnson we don't have to talk about it. It's useless. <laughs> That's the thing, though. It doesn't make sense. It my, doesn't. My, my point is, Harry and Meghan can do the same thing that everyone else in Hollywood does, and if it fails, suddenly it's, what a bunch of idiots, they're rubbish. They're do, you, do you know why? Do you know why? Because, because they people have to criticise no, because, them. No, because they're not yeah. talented. You they're have not talented. To, no, not I'm about. sorry. If someone told you you don't know anything about journalism, it would be an insult because you are a trained journalist. These people have it's no it's background talented, in history <laughs> in, in Hollywood. <laughs> No, but do you, do you understand my point? They don't have any skills. Well, they yeah, don't. Well, Harry has no background in creative industry. She was an actress. She wasn't, exactly. She wasn't a producer. She wasn't, you know, some well, that, director or whatever. being an actress. That, but uh, her... She wasn't Shall we say her CV is not that spectacular. Exactly. You know, one st- she was on Deal or No Deal as a high-heeled hostess yeah. and went on to a cable show that hardly anyone watched. Like, oh, lots of people watched. She's not exactly serious. Shakespearean, is she? No, she's not. But, that, but the fact is, she has worked in the industry. No, but they don't have any... Yeah, I'll gravity. give you that. Listen, there are a lot of experience experienced people that will never get the amount of exposure that Harry and Meghan have. Of course. But, but if they did, they would, make, they would make much better content okay. than they do. Uh, so I don't feel sorry for all them. Right. Sorry, so Esther's point, there. Esther's point, they're not talented. Let's allow uh, uh, Meghan a little bit of talent. OK, she can clearly she act. She bags Prince Harry. She can clearly <laughs> act. And yeah. Silk was not exactly a flop. So yeah. good luck to her there. Harry's got no talent. Yeah. Well, he... uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even write his own book. <laughs> I would say he's less talented than, than Megan. almost everyone. <laughs> than Megan. He's been born into a family where he doesn't he's need less talent. Talented does he? than no, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. You don't need talent to be Prince Harry. Yeah, yeah, you, don't, yeah, yeah you, you, you don't need to be, exactly. And look where it's gotten. Got yeah, him. I a mean, he's doing pretty well. House in he's yeah, doing okay. Well, um, yeah. yeah, well, there you go. Uh, Harry and Megan. <laughs> very, very talented. It sounds like an insult, doesn't it? You're yeah. less talented than Megan. <laughs> Can't get worse than that. Time for a bad ad. Robes are heavy and hot, and towels with fasteners? I think not. Now there's the wearable towel. The towel with arm openings. The wearable towel keeps you totally covered and gives you the freedom to use your hands. Great for getting the paper. Ideal to wear before a swim, and perfect to wear with family and friends. It's ultra absorbent. First class in quality and comes in red, white, and blue. What's totally amazing is there are absolutely no fasteners. Well, my $19.95 is already in the post. That, that uh, wearable <laughs> towel was brought to you by a company that's never heard of bathrobes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or togas. But as they say, bathrobes are too heavy. They're too heavy bathrobes. That's well, these are towels towel. as well. They're, they're the same material. I was, I was in a hotel over the New Year and, uh, uh, you know, they had bathrobes. I put them on. I thought, oh, I can't walk with this. It's so <laughs> heavy. heavy. If only there was a wearable towel. <laughs> uh, they haven't found a gap in the market, have they? They haven't. They certainly have not. They've been looking for one, but it's but not there. Aren't wearable towels just towels? So. They, they're pretty with holes right? in them. Imagine buying towels with holes in them. You can just tie a towel around yourself. Exactly. And you wear it. Yeah. I'll guarantee you. Let's go to a real break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, welcome back. I am still with the great JJ Anna C.O.B. and the even greater Esther Krakow. And here are a few of my thoughts on London's mayor, Steve Calm. 
a last-minute contender for low point of a torrid 2023. Sadiq Khan's nauseating New Year fireworks were the lowest of the low. This was when the two-bit mayor's mask slipped, when he revealed himself to be a wannabe dictator intent on maintaining power over the people via the rancid prism of pathetic propaganda. But will sinister Sadiq's cult of personality politics be repeated on a national level if Keir gets the keys to number 10. Will former Trotskyist Starmer's mask also slip as he plunges the UK into the less than wonderful world of destructive left-wing dogma? This is Labour's trick, to pretend they are not extreme when in fact all they want to do is open Britain's borders in a migrant free-for-all, bleed the rich and waste taxpayers' money on an epic scale. In London, the diminutive Mayor Khan barely bothers to keep his terrifying tendencies secret. How dare this ludicrous lefty use public funds to turn London's £3 million pyrotechnic spectacular into an electoral campaign event. Boom! The night sky explodes into light as against the backdrop of twinkling stars, we are informed in flaming huge letters, the Mayor of London presents. Outrageous. Who the hell does this preposterously self-important self-promoter think he is? Chairman Mao, according to the various luminaries, including King Charles, who narrated the impressive night sky display with a torrent of woke tosh, there are basically only three things to celebrate in Britain. Diversity, Windrush and the NHS. I've got nothing against diversity apart from the boredom I experienced at the very mention of the hideously overused word and nothing against Windrush. But quite a lot against our unamazing NHS. Clichéd Khan is typical of unimaginative politicians who believe we are all still standing around banging pots and pans in tribute to a disastrous health service that severely let the nation down in the Covid crisis and emphatically continues continues to do so. Meanwhile, naturally droning on about his gormless green tyranny that has ruined our once great capital city, Khan announced that, and I quote, London is a place for everyone. Or, more accurately, after a 16-year-old boy was stabbed to death watching the fireworks, a place for everyone not to be safe in. As we know only too well, Khan's murderous metropolis is dangerous for women to walk the streets. In fact, it's dangerous for everyone. Poor Harry Pittman knifed in the New Year crowd 20 minutes before the clock struck midnight became the 21st teen killed on London streets of fear in terrifying 2023. While kids died, the mayor focused on fleecing hard-pressed motorists in the outer London boroughs as he expanded his hated ULEZ scheme, pretending to be saving the planet when all he was doing was bringing in the dough to ward off the bankruptcy. His incompetent administration was clearly responsible. Turned out, surprise, surprise, to be a bit of a vote loser. So he treats us to a firework party that we paid for. Khan thinks the great British public are stupid, that they can be bought off with trinkets and persuaded by asinine slogans. Just maybe, come May's mayoral election, Londoners will speak and tell him, we're not idiots, get lost. But the general election almost certainly looms soon. And if you think Keir Starmer's motley crew of former trade union activists, clapped out human rights lawyers and washed up ex-local councillors won't treat Khan's useless virtue signalling as a blueprint for the entire country, think again. Is Khan's chaos in London a dress rehearsal for Keir's chaos all over the nation? Vote Labour and find out. That's what I think. JJ, what do you think? <sighs> uh, sorry, wake up. How could you possibly disagree <laughs> with that? Well, here's the thing. I agree with some parts of what this old man rants about. Yeah. Okay. But then there's so many parts I think, you're a hypocrite. Yeah. You're having a go at Khan, who I'm, I'm not a fan of. I'm allowed way. to be a hypocrite. I'm a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. That's his job. Khan putting up in, in big fireworks. Uh, That's your money. London That's mayor. your money. Yes, but every mayor does the same. Johnson did the same. In fact, Johnson's fireworks, he had a big sign up that said, Vodafone and the Mayor of London presents. And then Livingstone do the same thing. They all do it. No matter what they're bringing in, they always put, the Mayor of London has done this, Mayor of London does this. That's what they do. So they can try and win more votes. When they, when they yeah, yeah, run. that's what he does. He just appeals to people who will vote for him. Yeah, I think, I think well, it's what's wrong with that as a politician? It's, 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 what about the people who don't, don't, don't want to vote for him? He doesn't vote help us. Him. doesn't vote, help vote, us. Vote, vote for the Tories what about all the motorists in Bromley and places like that? It's not helping them, is it? You know what? You know what? You know why? I'm not, and I'm not a fan of you guys either, but the reason he's having to do it is because our, he bankrupted the city. Our Tory government. Oh, rubbish! Have given him 
Like these ridiculous um, uh, oh, levels of nonsense. Got utter and nonsense. Johnson, Johnson, our Tory him. government has tried to restrict him because he's overspending. They said you can't have any more money, and uh, he desperately needs it because he's nearly bankrupt. I, city, I think right? for me, it's the audacity for him to try and promote himself when knife crime in London is the worst it's ever been, yeah. basically. Promote himself by what? By putting mayor... The, the mayor exactly. Yeah, Everyone the does is, the same no, thing. No, but it's the audacity. It's like you're not taking the issues London is facing well, seriously. Well, well, am I the... Am I the mayor of London Am I the only person with any common sense? I'm yes, saying they you, all do it. Every but single I'm mayor does it. the audacity. So why not have to go back every other mayor doing it? London under Siddi Khan, I'm sorry, it's a shithole. And he needs to accept it. It is. It's horrible. He's I, ruined I, this as a woman city. in London, I'm, I'm constantly terrified. What's he done, uh, JJ, that's good for London? Yeah, exactly. When he came into Think power, this was the greatest city on the face of the earth. Uh, okay, it's let's not go that 50 far. seconds. <laughs> let's not go that far. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> am I right? <laughs> then let's not if go it's that lucky. Far. Just, just behind Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> a Mogadishu. <laughs> London, twinned with Mogadishu. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, it's a shit show, isn't it? It is. It's a complete shit hole. But yes, answer the question. What has Sadiq Khan done right? Well, uh, dun, 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 he's bought himself dun, a nice three hundred thousand pound armor-plated Range Rover you, you, on our cash. You, you know, his dad was uh, a bus driver. Oh, no, he but he doesn't like to talk <laughs> about it. Get that quiet. Exactly. <laughs> there are so many politicians now who just say, "My dad was a bus driver." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, You're David Cameron. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Is that man of the people? <laughs> exactly. The one thing I will say about uh, Sadiq Khan, I, I think he's genuinely working class and he's genuinely moronic as well. Ah. And the, thing, the thing is, his though, heart's it's, in it's, the right place. It, is it really? Well, yeah. I think it's like his in wallet. The, his yeah, heart exactly. is in the right place. Inside his range. I over. think um, can he do more to reduce knife crime and make our streets safer? Yes, no, I but think, you know, I think, it's, it's I think discouraging he can. that he's not even but taking it seriously. I, like, he was, asked about, oh, he was asked about knife right. crime and he's talking about mobile phone companies. I have a young brother, yeah, I have a young that. black, black brother in London and he's more likely to die of knife crime. And you have this man talking about, oh, it's not knife because crime, that's the issue, it's the mobile phone no, companies. No, 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 that's not, that's not what he said. You're twisting his words. No, but the thing is, he was asked why, he was asked, I heard his words. He was asked why knife crime has gotten so much worse in London. And he said, it's because the mobile phone companies aren't working with my administration. Excuse me, what about the people actually carrying the knives? Yeah, but that is a problem. But that what, is the problem. What he's saying makes sense is that most uh, at knife point burglaries are to take he's mobile about phones. Knife burglaries. Are yes, yes, yes. Crime. Like well, people listen, just being answered, randomly listen, You can't, you can't uh, have his answer and then say you don't like it, even though it's no. True. It's, it's, it's however, what I will, what I also, what I will say is that uh, knife crime is down in the West Midlands by five percent. Uh, I think we're talking Manchester. about London. Yeah, we're talking about London. Yeah, and yes, and yet in London. And yet in London. No, 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 I'm not so, having that. So, no, so my, my, I'm saying. No, listen to what I'm saying, Kevin. No, it's I'm, down I'm in the West Midlands. To. It's down in Great Manchester. Okay. But it's up in okay, London. Okay, fair enough. London's very. Sorry. Yeah. My apologies. <laughs> my apologies. So, <laughs> I'm making a so, point. So for that, I can't. I cannot defend Khan because we're the only city really where it's, it's grown worse. exponentially. Yeah, and how about how about this as a serious proposition? You know, I was about to say the last resort of the political scan scoundrel is to make climate change their priority. It's actually the first resort of a political scoundrel. Uh, you know, nothing against climate change if you want, but uh, he, ha he, has, he has more important priorities. And to yeah. start this year, if he was to stand up and announce, I will make it a priority to cut back on knife crime, to cut back on teenagers being stabbed to death on the streets of our great capital city, I think that would be a good message, don't you? I think, that's a, I think that would be a good message. Yeah, I but I also so. think um, parents okay. have to step in and, and do more. Absolutely. I was that. saying earlier today, yeah, when I was a kid, point, yeah. when I'd finished school, I'd have an after school football club something to attend. After that, straight home, mm. play out in the street where your parents can see you on, on your block. Well, he's and then you're in for dinner and that's questions. it. What kind of households are producing young people that think it's okay to be walking well, around? Well, is it households or is it so It's households because you're raising... Is it video games? It's, it's, yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. it's a cultural it's issue, but honestly, <clears throat> you must be raising a little demon to think it's acceptable to be walking around the streets of with London with a knife. Yeah, 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 I agree with that, but, but they get their value system, if you like, many of them, yeah. from, uh, you know, uh, video games. What about communities? What happened to communities? What happened to families? If you're If you're relying on social media, for your value system, something is seriously wrong. But then wrong. that MP, that well, I forgot his name, the MP last week who said um, the kids who do bad in his constituency, they've got we'll crap, crap parents. parents. Yeah, no, that's not fair. That's, um, no, that is that's fair. That is I fair. think it is fair. Kids. It is what, fair. what happened to you? That is fair. It's fair. It's fair. If, you, if, you're, if you've got good parents, generally speaking, oh, yeah. if you've right. got good parents, take that generally back. speaking, take that back. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not. You're not <laughs> <stabbing> <laughs> I can say stupid things and then take it back. <laughs>
Uh, but seriously, I agree with that, so I was wrong. Yeah, there. good. good. Yeah, yeah. You won't often hear that. You won't often hear that. But yeah, I mean, he, that's what he should do. He should say, I'm going to clean up the city. I'm going to make it safer. I'm going to make it safer for women to walk the streets, for kids to walk the streets. Uh, to go back to my uh, sort of video game social media point, I've been saying all day that well, I'm sure you were the same, JJ. I was no angel when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Basically, I had a scrap at least once a week. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. next day, I'd be best friends with the kid. Yeah. The trouble is now, uh, the same fights uh, are fought by kids with knives and they yeah. kill each other. It's, a, it's, a, it's crazy. As you say, when we were kids, you have, a, you, you have a, an insult, mm. slanging match. At, at worst, they might end in a fisticuff. Yeah. Yeah. These days, the kids goes from an insult to bringing out a knife right. like that. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. But I think you make a fair point about social media playing a large yeah. large part in it. That's where kids are getting their, their moral That's the challenge for parents yeah. is to stop yeah. that or, or to uh, monitor what their I think, kids I think, are doing I think in their good, bedrooms yeah. with, their, with their laptops and computers. I think a good uh, backhand but, is needed. Yeah, right but uh, uh, <laughs> that way. was a very bad discussion. It's time for a bad ad. <laughs> <laughs> are you suffering from pungent pits? Foul feet? Beastly butt odor? How do you stop the stink? Hi, I'm Adam J, and this is Doc Bottoms A Spray, the all new, all over deodorant that prevents odors before they start and can be used anywhere, and I mean anywhere on your body. A spray goes where other deodorants can't. A spray your butt, A spray your feet, A spray under your arms, you can even A spray your privates. A spray is safe for all your odor zones. A spray is 100% natural, chemical free, fragrance free, and offers 24 hour protection. Plus, it's made in the USA. Our revolutionary formula safely protects you against embarrassing body odors by neutralizing odor causing bacteria. It's that simple. No bacteria, no stink. Ordinary deodorants mask odors and can only be used on armpits and feet. A spray can be used all over your body and literally stops odors before they start. Uh, shouldn't that be called arse spray? I think yes. <laughs> I, I knew it was game over when she raised her skirt and sprayed in the house. Oh, <laughs> like, no, yeah, I, did, I wanted to expunge that from my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, you know, that's well, just deodorant, isn't it? Yeah, but it's... It it's gets, called a good shower. It, well, yeah, you can, you can wash. I mean, you can do some A-spray. Yep. Yeah. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> She's wearing aqua de palma. It Sorry. doesn't make any sense, this spray. The guy says it works before the fre before the scent even starts. Mm. So so you just spray, you just spray everywhere. everywhere? Well, I suppose that's what you do with deodorant, isn't it? You, you put it on and then you start to sweat. I mean, I think it has the same yeah. effect as, like, lemon and lime. It kills the uh, uh, bacteria causing odour before you... You got all of that just from the advert, well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the technology <laughs> behind it. That's it. But that was a very, very disgusting advert. Thank you very much. Uh, what was that guy? <laughs> that guy, L L Lanny. Yeah. Yeah. Lanny, yeah. And I can't spray spray when I got my butt smelling. <laughs> great, great. And on that bombshell, that revolting bombshell, <laughs> that's the end of this edition, this special first of the year edition of What Just Happened. My thanks to JJ and the COB and Esther Cracker. You didn't call me your best friend then. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's because you're not. Uh, <laughs> not even my friend. Uh, I've been Kevin O'Sullivan. You've been an amazing audience. This has been What Just Happened. <laughs>